The Buran program, also known as the VKK Space Orbiter Program, was a Soviet and later Russian reusable spacecraft project that began in 1974 at the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute in Moscow and was formally suspended in 1993. In addition to being the designation for the whole Soviet, Russian reusable spacecraft project, Buran was also the name given to Orbiter K-1, which completed one uncrewed spaceflight in 1988 and was the only Soviet reusable spacecraft to be launched into space. Unlike the space shuttle, Buran had a capability of flying uncrewed missions, as well as performing fully automated landings. The Buran program was started by the Soviet Union as a response to the United States Space Shuttle program. Although the Buran class was similar in appearance to NASA's Space Shuttle Orbiter, and could similarly operate as a re-entry spaceplane, its internal and functional design was distinct. The Buran Orbital Vehicle Program was developed in response to the U.S. Space Shuttle Program, which in the 1980s raised considerable concerns among the Soviet military and especially Defense Minister Dmitry Ustinov. Officially, the Buran orbital vehicle was designed for the delivery to orbit and return to Earth of spacecraft, cosmonauts, and supplies. Both Chertok and Gleb lozino lazinski suggest that from the beginning, the program was military in nature, however, the exact military capabilities, or intended capabilities, of the Buran program remain classified. The development of the Buran began in the early 1970s as a response to the U.S. space shuttle program. The construction of the shuttles began in 1980, and by 1984 the first full-scale Buran was rolled out. Work on these languages continued beyond the end of the Buran program, with PROL-2 being extended into SIPROL, and eventually all three languages developed into Drakon which is still in use in the Russian space industry. Until the end of the Soviet Union in 1991, seven cosmonauts were allocated to the Buran program and trained on the OKGLI test vehicle. In 1982, it was decided that all Buran commanders and their backups would occupy the third seat on a Soyuz mission, prior to their Buran spaceflight. Only two potential Buran crew members reached space, Igor Volk, who flew in Soyuz T-12 to the space station Salyut 7, and Anatoly Levchenko who visited Mir, launching with Soyuz TM-4 and landing with Soyuz TM-3. Levchenko died of a brain tumor the year after his orbital flight, Bachurin left the cosmonaut corps because of medical reasons, Shukin was assigned to the backup crew of Soyuz TM-4 and later died in a plane crash, Stankovichus was also killed in a plane crash, while Borodai and Zabolotsky remained unassigned to a Soyuz flight until the Buran program ended. At the time of the Soyuz T-12 mission the Buran program was still a state secret. Site-251 used as Buran Orbiter Landing Facility, also known as Ubilani Airfield. After the end of the Buran program, Site-251 was abandoned but later reopened as a commercial cargo airport. After cancellation of the Buran program it was adapted for pre-launch operations of the Soyuz and Progress spacecraft. Buran never flew again. The program was cancelled shortly after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. In 2002, the collapse of the hangar in which it was stored destroyed the Buran K-1 orbiter. An aerodynamic testbed, OKGLI, was constructed in 1984 to test the in-flight properties of the Buran design. The only orbital launch of the Buran 1.01 was at 3 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time on 15 November 1988 from Pad 11037 in Baikonur. 1993 Buran 1.01 Uncrewed Second Flight, Duration 15 to 20 Days After the first flight of a Buran shuttle, the project was suspended due to lack of funds and the political situation in the Soviet Union. At the time of its cancellation, 20 billion rubles had been spent on the Buran program. The cost of a Buran launch carrying a 20-ton payload was estimated at 270 million rubles, versus 5.5 million rubles on the Proton rocket. Over time, several scientists looked into trying to revive the Buran program, especially after the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. The 2003 grounding of the U.S. space shuttles caused many to wonder whether the Energia launcher or Buran shuttle could be brought back into service. In 2010 the director of Moscow's Central Machine Building Institute said the Buran program would be reviewed in the hope of restarting a similar crewed spacecraft design, with rocket test launches as soon as 2015. Due to the 2011 retirement of the American Space Shuttle and the need for STS-type craft in the meantime to complete the International Space Station, some American and Russian scientists had been mulling over plans to possibly revive the already existing Buran shuttles in the Buran program rather than spend money on an entirely new craft and wait for it to be fully developed but the plans did not come to fruition. On the 25th anniversary of the Buran flight in November 2013, Oleg Ostapenko, the new head of Roscosmos, the Russian Federal Space Agency, 
proposed that a new heavy lift launch vehicle be built for the Russian space program. It was designed by NPO Energia of the Soviet Union as part of the Buran program for a variety of payloads including the Buran spacecraft. Buran was the first spaceplane to be produced as part of the Soviet-Russian Buran program. The space shuttle was later retrofitted with automated landing capability, first flown 18 years after the Buran on STS-121, but the system was intended to be used only in contingencies. Buran could lift 30 metric tons into orbit in its standard configuration, comparable to the early space shuttle's original 27.8 metric tons. Buran could return 20 tons from orbit, versus the space shuttle's 15 tons. Buran included a drag chute, the space shuttle originally did not, but was later retrofitted to include one. The lift-to-drag ratio of Buran is cited as 6.5, compared to a subsonic L-D of 4.5 for the space shuttle. Buran has a different carbon-carbon heat tile layout in its underside, in which all gaps between heat tiles are parallel or perpendicular to the direction of airflow through the orbiter.